This is a video I will likely be referencing in future and other videos. If you just want the technical details of the measuring rig, please do skip ahead. But the first part of this covers the background and development process. Last year I was doing some investigations into hover and power performance and I wanted to produce a power versus height graph. And this led me down a bit of a rabbit hole, which I've only really just come out of. Now, I had to shelve all of my projects over our winter for various reasons, so that didn't help. But it did start off thinking, how do I measure this hover height? Just looking at it here, I know the height of the model, so I could probably do a extrapolation based off the, the video. But if we're trying to do it a bit more scientifically, i.e. multiple measurements repeatable, ideally down to the millimetre, then we need to measure it properly. And about the first thing is to restrain the craft in place. Except you can't restrain it because you don't want to interfere with the actual hovering, which is what you're trying to measure. You need to restrain it without adding weight, without adding friction and without interfering with the air going in or out of the hull. That's the ideal. I built a testing rail, which is literally a pair of parallel posts, and the model sits in between them on little sliders with ball bearings. So the craft is constrained to go up and down with very little friction and very little extra weight. It assumes that the craft is actually stable, so if you're trying to investigate a craft which is perhaps less stable, this doesn't work as well, but we'll come to that. With this, we can measure height easily enough. Next problem is power, and this is like a, a sub-warren in the rabbit hole. Easiest thing is to use onboard telemetry. I've already got a voltage sensor, I've got a current sensor, so we can simply record the power on the model as it's being tested, but running off a battery, as well as being annoying having to keep changing it, you're dealing with voltage sag issues, it makes it difficult to get consistent readings. I then realise got to go to external power, and a quick way is to grab your handy DPS 600 PB and just plug it in. Except you've got to get the wire in without also adding more weight and more friction. And as anyone who hangs about a certain form of RC groups knows, you extend the motor wires, not the battery wires. Which then leads to moving the ESCs outside of the model, having those on the power supply and then extending the motor leads in, which is what is going on here. And just one more thing, this particular model being tested, the servos need to be powered for it to actually hover. If they're unpowered, their pressure opens up the flaps. So you either fix them in place or you have a battery in it, but not connected to the motors, only to the back and receiver and servos. But finally, with this arrangement, you've got a controlled hover and controlled power, so you can start doing your measurements. The absolute first thing I did was pen and paper. I just measured height off a ruler, measured power off of a power meter, and jotted it down, put it into a spreadsheet. And if I was only doing one or two tests, well, I wouldn't be making this video. But I knew I wanted to do a lot more tests of a lot more configurations and have more data points. Very quickly, the manual idea just became untenable. I next moved to a semi-automated process where I pointed a camera at the lift indicator, fancy way of saying ruler, and had another camera pointing at the power meter and synchronised them up so that I could read off the power on the computer and then put it in a spreadsheet. It's definitely better but still annoyingly tedious and not really good enough for lots of experiments. This led me to thinking about an automated testing station, where after setting the model up, setting the power and measuring everything would be done for me and logged to a file. If you are already familiar with Arduino or the like, 
this is easy enough. I wasn't. So I then got stuck into getting an Arduino, beginning to learn it, setting up the sensors. I need to say, I am not a programmer. All I'm doing is looking up tutorials, scraping code online and mashing it together until it does what I want. That's not programming. Hmm. Having started off just wanting to make some pretty graphs, it took me a bit of time to get everything set up in a basic program written to do what I want. It is now working and is producing very good results. The program flow is very simple. What I discovered even from manual experiments was you want to go to maximum lift first and then descend from maximum lift down to zero rather than the other way around. It helps unstick the model initially, overcome the friction of the testing rig. And depending on the testing you're wanting to do, you may want to elevate the thing out of ground effect and then come down. The program just sets a power level, waits a few seconds for the model to settle down, and then it takes 50 readings of height, voltage and current, and then it repeats that process for each power level on the way down. And then that process is looped three times, and it all gets averaged out. So here is a very quick overview of this. So my linkage is on ball bearings, so that, and it's got a counterweight made of whatever stuff I could find sitting about the garage. So this moves with very, very little friction. I would probably make it a bit sturdier in retrospect, or even have a, a double para, parallelogram, if I pronounce that linkage rather than just the single but it's good enough so that is constrained to moving more or less up and down you know it does technically an arc but close enough it's reasonably rigid in all dimensions so that's our kind of uh, restriction without restricting for electronics i've just got my arduino board voltage divider. Probably solder this up to be a little bit more permanent now that I know it works. But this is pretty straightforward, the usual spaghetti nest of wiring, that's just what you get with these projects. Distance sensors, the HC SR04 or whatever, it's just the standard cheap ultrasonic sensor. The ESCs are some old Simon K or BL Heli old tech now. But good enough, they do get quite hot. And I think they're kind of intended for some sort of air cooling, so I've stripped the heat shrink off. I may put a heat sink on that, but I usually just have a fan blown at it. And my current sensor is just a DF robot, whatever, I'll put it on the screen. I realised after putting this together, I'm supposed to solder the other terminal through the board as well, but I just kind of sold it together and taped it up. I didn't realise it could be, you know, put through there, but whatever, it still works. So I've got my takeoff from the ESCs, and then uh, just another takeoff to the actual voltage feed, to the voltage sensing. So overall, it's pretty simple. Again, I've got other ideas for how I could do this rig a little bit better, but it's good enough for what I've been doing. As for the test model itself, it's a square and it's my standard construction, just a 6mm foam. Standard beam, same old motor, 2836, 950kV, 10 by 45 That's really it. Well, I've got my kind of 3D printed cutout so I can experiment with stability port sizes and at some point a variable mechanism that can just be removed and I can put in flaps or I think an iris is a bit ambitious but you never know. Aside from that there's really nothing to see here. 
That's for my distance sensor if I'm reading. Depending on the measurements I'm doing, I may have the sensor above and it comes up to it. I may have the sensor down here and it goes away from it. With a test done, it's just a matter of getting the data into Excel and doing all the usual stuff to produce a pretty graph. And that's it for this video. Again, I imagine I'll be pointing to this video in future as an overview of the testing rig. Doubtless I will have improvements to make, but I think the basic parallelogram, which I cannot pronounce, I think that basic design is actually quite a good solution for stabilising a model without adding excessive weight and friction. I will leave you with this graph, which is preliminary results. We'll definitely be redoing and refining the measurements. I will also ask any true fans of this channel, do you recognise this? And this graph I made last year, which was a kind of theoretical expectation of something. Hmm, interesting.